Hello there folks, I'm Dan Brown from a sort of interesting life.com. Joining me is other Dan. Hello. There we go. <laughs> Introductions aside, you're joining us for a real-time trip through this lift bridge down at the bottom stretch of the Montgomery Canal, or the bottom of the top stretch of the Montgomery Canal, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't. And really, this video is all about getting Dan's opinions on doing lift bridges and locks for the first time ever. As I just wanted to put some sort of perspective into these videos that isn't just me talking constantly, like I'm already doing in this video. <laughs> um, so then, firstly, while well, we've got the video of the lift bridge on, what do you think? When you see lift bridges and see them on telly or whatever, had you ever done one before? I haven't, no. And um, I thought that it's going to be really hard to do because it's a massive thing and it's a part of the road too. And uh, it goes up pretty easy, to be honest. It's uh, not hard at all. You do get a bit tired when you're going as fast as you can trying to get the boat through, but no, nah, it's all nice fun. Excellent. That was an excellent response. <laughs> <laughs> it is exactly what you say. Um, you look at it, and like you say, with this one particular, having the road running over it, it does seem to be like, how can you ever wind that up with a handle? Yeah. But I think as well, what like you say, with the sort of getting tired thing is, because it's at such a low gearing to obviously make every crank as little effort as possible, you then have to do about 10 times the amount of them if that's, I oh, don't yeah. know if I'm making any sense. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but basically, you have to wind the handle an awful lot to really slowly... Just to get it moving. Uh, as you're seeing, like, how long it's taken to wind this up. And that was with you feeling under pressure <laughs> because of the wind and all sorts on this particular day to go as fast as you could. Uh, you can see, well, like you say, it does lift a fair old way up. Oh, I just popped into the <laughs> video there, see? <laughs> so, yeah, really, um, adding my own random thoughts into this as well as if I haven't done that enough over the past few years on YouTube one of the things that I always think is it's excellent and it's amazing to me to have somebody else here to do the bridge while I can be on the boat and get us moving and so on instead of being right tie the boat up run down lift the bridge and all the rest of it and you can see here I was able to moor up on the proper moorings on the right hand side of the screen whereas if I was on my own I would have had to moor up just the very front of the boat to one little mooring mushroom that you might be able to see just to the left of the front of the boat now and obviously then in the wind as it was a very windy day that this trip was on uh, you then have the boat like floating around and being blown all over the place but yeah nice and simple yeah. um so moving on to the next topic as after this little clip we're going to move into a nice little boat trip uh, locks now, you joined me for the descent through the Frankton Locks oh, yeah. a couple of weeks ago. And that, I was very interested to see what you would think, as all of the boating we'd done previously was just nice, simple, empty winter canals. And yeah. no, nothing apart from a couple of little bridges to go through. Right then, all of your thoughts about going through locks? Um, well, the one we went through was really busy, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. And the... Uh, People were starting to get a bit agitated because they've been waiting their ages and they wanted to go through as quick as they can and it's not a it's not really a quick thing to do and um, I remember you chucked me on the lock didn't you? Uh, me on threw me the uh, what's it the the wind the wind yeah threw that at me and said right off you go <laughs> and uh, I haven't I haven't never done it before but luckily uh, there was a chap there who works on the canal and helped me out and told me how to do it. And um, I was quite shocked, uh, one thing, how when you close the uh, the lock, that you don't lock it. The water itself just holds it down there. Yeah. And that really shocked me because I thought, oh, right, you've got to you know, do some more winding up or something just to lock the uh, the locks. But uh, no, the water just holds it down, you know, holds it there. And that really shocked me, that did, because to me, you think you would need a lock on it for it to be, you know, like health and safety or something silly yeah, yeah. like that. But no, I really enjoyed it. It was, uh, how many locks was it? It was about four, uh, was it? four locks. And the first one was the staircase lock That's where you go one, yeah. out of one lock straight into another. But yeah, just to put into context, this was the Frankton locks, which you have to book to go through and they're only open from 12 till two. two yeah. And that's why as 
always loads of boats there. Or very often, I wouldn't say always, but very often there's loads of boats about yeah. because they can only go through for two hours a day. And as there were only three boats at the top, normally they send two boats down and then two boats upwards. So there was um, three boats until he was the third waiting at the top of the locks. So the chap said, ah, go on, head down to, and that's what led to a little little bit of um, some, I don't know what term I would use, but as you say, there were some people waiting to come up who weren't too happy no. that there was seemingly the endless flow of boats coming towards them, and they were just floating around in the middle of it all. That was a very good first lock experience to have, though, I think, because it's sort of really throwing you in the deep end of having some actual boats around, so you've yeah. got just that little bit more... Um, I don't, I don't know if I'd call it pressure, but you've got that sort of thing of there's people around and there's people watching, so you can't really like take the amount of time that I often take when I'm doing them on my own. As Well, most people would come and give you a hand anyway, but you would definitely be stacking up a good queue of people oh, yeah. doing them single-handed at like 20, 25 minutes a lock, uh, as it does take me to do them on my own sometimes. It was a good, uh, good job, I think, that we, uh, we pulled up on that day because... Even with us, it was a task. Yeah, That's oh, it's how... a, it a good, long uh, endurance yeah. feat. So imagine that on your own. You'd really struggle. Out. Well, it'd be tough. Uh, it'd really be tough. It comes down to basically just everything that I always say, anything to do with boats, that it's all about being slow and taking your time. And I mean, the further down on this stretch of the canal you go, the fewer boats you tend to see actually make the trip to just a dead end seven miles down from the Frankton Locks. And so the middle sort of section, there's three locks at Aston, which I absolutely love doing because you very rarely have any boats around and very rarely meet another boat coming towards you or arriving up behind you. So I literally just take them as slowly as possible. And that's where I've done a lot of my previous lock videos, which I'll put links in the description too. Um, and it is just that thing of actually having somebody there when you've got a good chunk of locks to go through at Frankton or Grindley Brook and all these different places on the canal, it's, it definitely is a huge, huge help. And even ignoring the actual amount of time that you save by having somebody there to be able to open the lock gates so you can drive straight in and close it behind you and all the rest of it, rather than have to moor up the boat and then open the gates, yeah. then go back to the boat, then and put the boat through, in, yeah. then go and close the gate. And you get the general gist. But even more than the time that you save, I think it's just the fact that you're not having to do all the running around and yeah. grabbing a rope to hold the boat in place. Yeah, that's It's a long day's work if you do a lot of locks on your own in a day. And I mean, I'm lucky to not really ever have to do many locks on my own in one go. But I mean, further down at various places on the canal, I mean, if people want to Google Audlum, for example, then you can literally, you know, on the big trip home with Tilly that I did when I first bought her, I think I did about 20 locks, maybe a couple more in a day. And I don't think it would have been possible, first of all, just due to the time it would have taken to do that on my own. But certainly, had I have had to do all that and do all the running around on my own, I would have slept very well that <laughs> night, I'll say that much. So, I suppose at this point I'll say, are there any other random thoughts or things you want to throw in? Um, just this clip, really. Uh... How windy this day was uh that was tough with us too we were getting blown everywhere weren't we and uh but it was a lovely day it was a probably the most extreme boat ride i've ever had yeah <laughs> it's like when you look at this clip it just looks as calm and perfect a sunny day as you can imagine it doesn't look that bad on this it was just extremely windy and uh, where we turned around on the boat on this trip before uh, where we went through the lift bridge at the start of this video, it was just so open and windy at that oh. point. It's like the, I don't think Tilly has ever moved so fast and she was moving literally sideways rather than forwards, yeah. just under the power of the wind. And as you say, I mean, this part here, it's like, it looks perfect and it was a beautiful day. But again, as I said to you at the time, it, if it wasn't for you being there, this was a day that I wouldn't have taken the yeah. boat out on my own, just in case as you're passing these boats that you've seen. If you do start to get blown towards them or what have you, it's always good to have somebody else there to, well, take the blame. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody who's expecting me to say something <laughs> helpful, like run down and push the boat out, <laughs> I can only apologise. Um, 
Anything else? Yeah, uh, on this day, you'd say it was a lovely day. And uh, remember we seen that uh, kingfisher? Yes. That flew past? Yes. That was beautiful. It's one of those strange things on the Montgomery that even though it's only seven miles, and I only do it normally sort of once a year, I say normally, that's twice out of three years that aren't even three complete years yet that I've done it once a year. I've seen more kingfishers on the Montgomery Canal than I have in all of the time that I've spent up on the proper Langoflin stretch. And just the fact that you were there to see yeah. one, because they're so quick, and I've, ne I've managed to get one little clip of a kingfisher on video, but you couldn't even tell what it was, because it no. moved so quick, the camera couldn't keep up with it. That was the, uh, that's the first time I've ever seen one in real life. You know, you've seen them on pictures and that. And I only got about like a second glance at it. Honestly, it was just like a blue blur, just flew past. Yeah. And the speed it was going, like honestly, it was just a blur, just a blue blur. Uh, well, I d just remember that I was looking down the canal after it, and it literally took me a couple of seconds after it disappeared. Yeah. To be like, Oh, kingfisher! <laughs> and we tried to, like, every bird we seen then, it was like, yeah. is it a kingfisher? Is it a kingfisher? <laughs> go, go, grab the camera. And no, we'd never seen it again, then it was gone. It... Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wonderful. Uh, it is uh, from the very spot that we saw the kingfisher, I went on to see a stoat a couple of days later, which, first time I've ever seen a stoat. It swam across the canal and then jumped up on the towpath and was just like, like a tiny, really brown ferret is the only way I can describe it. Incredibly cute thing, but again, gone before I could like, react or see or do anything about actually ever recording it on camera. Uh, is that the after stuff? Anything else you want to add? You've come yeah. up with two excellent things there. <laughs> I'm pretty good. Uh, I think that's it. All right then, in that case, allow me to start shamelessly plugging everything. <laughs> Well, thanks for watching. Feel free to check out all my other videos, loads of boating and biking and outdoors and goodness knows what else. Feel free to add me on Facebook and Twitter and like the Facebook page, all that sort of stuff. Please do also consider checking out my short Kindle books about boat life. Search Amazon for The Narrow Boat Lad or find links to everything just mentioned and maybe even more stuff like audiobook for example in the description below as well as some um, lift bridge videos and uh, lock videos too. On that note I will finally wrap us up properly and say thanks for tuning in. Until the next time keep it boat worthy, keep it other than worthy and of course farewell. Bye.